Hiya folks, this is Clansman Bushcraft. I am just uh, in the fields at the back of my house and I'm coming for a wee walk. I'm going to do some tree identification today. But um, I stumbled across this little uh, patch of cattails here. Um, it's not in the water anywhere, there, it's in a bit of boggy ground. Um, so don't rely on uh, finding lakes and stuff for cattail. You can find it anywhere, especially in bogs. Right, I'll bring you back in a little bit once I've found some, uh, some of the trees I'm looking for. I'm particularly going to try and find hazel today, um, but I don't know of anywhere where there is some, so I'm going to go and have a look. Cheers folks, bye now. Alright folks, Clansman Bushcraft again. I'm just at the other end of this field and um, there's a, a little river running down here through that tunnel, just uh, in a dark patch, just over there. Comes out of there, and that runs through the village, but um, it actually runs quite clear. But I actually think that this is a hazel tree. Um, I'm going to go and uh, check it out for for the identifying signs and things. But it looks to me like that could be a hazel tree from here. I'm going to go and have a look. Cheers. Bye. Okay, folks. I was wrong. This is not a hazel tree. Um, I'm not sure what this is. I'm going to have to get the book out and have a look. But there is one just on this side of the bank as well. Hopefully, I don't fall in. It's very similar to the hazel tree from a distance, but the leaves are com the completely wrong shape. And it doesn't have any pods on it either. It's a nice little tree, very, very green, um, very pliable. I imagine this would be quite useful for uh, for processes and, and carving and doing things like uh, baskets and stuff as well um, but I'm going to have to figure out what this one actually is so I'll get the book out in a little bit and I'll have a look but for the moment I don't know and there's a massive one just the other side of the of the uh, this little river here I'm not going to cross it because I know it's not hazel this river is a nice little river. It's uh, quite fast flowing. It flows from uh, from the hills through the through the local park and then onto the farmer's field. So at this point here, um, it's come from under the village out into the farmer's fields, and uh, it hasn't been contaminated at all. Um, obviously, I'd boil it if I was going to drink it, um, but you've got to watch because uh, sometimes when the uh, it's been raining heavily. The runoff in this field, in these fields, can be really bad, um, and this river will go all cloudy. But at times like this, it's nice and clear, and uh, I'd be quite happy to take a, a pile of that and uh, boil it up, and that'd be perfect for fresh water drinking. Cheers, folks! Right, uh, onwards and upwards. Just been walking along this path, and I found this uh, little plant here. I believe it's red dead nettle. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. I will have to check again in my book. But that's edible, if it is. Um, it's uh, very similar to the nettle, um, of which, again, there's thousands on this little path. You can make nettle soup and all that sort of things. Uh, natural cordage. It's quite a nice little area for uh, resources and edibles. Excellent. How are you folks? Right, this is the uh, the gorse bush. Um, it's very, very plentiful in Scotland, and uh, it's everywhere. The yellow flowers can be picked and made into a tea. And if you rub them on uh, together in your hands and smell them, it smells a little bit like coconut. It's very similar. I haven't drunk the tea yet, but I will be doing it shortly. Thank you very much. Tell it's an ice tree by the, uh, the shape of the leaves and the pattern of the of the, of the leaves. They're on either.
either side of the stem at the same level. There can be between three to seven of them on each side. I'll leave it at the very point of it as well. Get out of this one here. Like this. It has very, very distinctive parts here on both sides at the same level and they'll have a clump of seed uh, seed pods and flowering pods at the very top and at several places on the way down. Now folks, it's an ash tree. Thank you. Okay, I just come up this hill. Um, I'm breathing out my ass. Uh, just because I'm unfit. But, here, I don't know if you can see, there is a rabbit. There he is. There's a couple of them up there. Obviously, without permission to shoot, I'm not going to shoot. So today's to go in there and try and find some hazel. My house is actually Oh, it's very, very windy. This is actually down there somewhere. Nice day though, just very, very windy. Catch you a bit. Okay folks. Right. I've come up that massive hill there. <laughs> I had to come along to those little trees at the front and then walk along to that road down there turn at that junction and come up this hill it's a hell of a lot steeper than it looks but I've got you, I am probably three miles from the nearest nearest good village, good sized village it's a little hamlet over there but probably three miles from the nearest village I've just walked up to the trees and what do I see? A shopping trolley full of rubbish. Someone's obviously been up here and cleaned up, but in the process they found a shopping trolley. And all that rubbish, look at that. That's unreal. And they've also, very nicely, left a garden chair for the fat boys that can't get up the hill. So I'll be sitting down there and having a drink isn't it? Right, have a wee break and then I'm going to uh, take a walk around these woods. Right folks, this one here is Sycamore. It's a rather large tree and it's got um, incredibly red stems. This is uh, maybe not the best example to use. If you look up there. The stems of the tree are very, very red. It's got one big thick trunk, and lots of branches. This is someone's campfire. They've done a reasonably good job of tidying it up. 
And this is all the rubbish in that shopping trolley. That's unreal. There's a yoga mat. Big five litre drum of water. Uh, sorry, that's probably ten litre drum of water. A massive sheet of plastic, don't know what that is. Duvet of some kind. Chair. That looks like a swimming pool. It is, I think. And this shopping trolley just full of glass and bottles and cans. At least they did a job of tidying it up, but they thought they'd have tried to take it out as well. It's not very nice in here. This is just off to the side. So it looks like where they've had a tent and also another campfire. So it's quite bad actually, I don't like that. Beautiful little woodland though. Right, see this over here? This is a fern. And the new shoots and the new leaves are really, really small and curly like this. But they grow out like this. And they grow from several stems all clumped around one little piece of ground like that. And the same here. Several stems all clumped around the same piece here. Now, in Scotland we have another one called Bracken. Now, I believe there's some over here. This is Bracken. This is, if you can see, one. I've just broken it, but it's uh, one stem, very, very similar to the fern, but it doesn't clump together like the fern does. I've just broken that one. But give you a better look at it. There you go, it's quite delicate. You can use these in Scotland for um, all sorts of things. They make uh, very good bedding. I wouldn't lie directly on top of them without a cover of some kind. You could fill an emergency bivvy bag with these and then lie on top. Um, but you've got to be very careful of ticks with these as well, especially on the on the uh, on the dead ones, the bur really really brown ones. Um, the ticks uh, spread disease, like Lyme's disease. You've got to be very careful. Right, onwards and upwards. Someone's been up here and tried to make a shelter of some kind. They've not done a very good job. But the basis is there. They're using string for their top cord rather than uh, wood. Which is strange. I suppose it would work, but... Anyway. There's lots of rubbish around here. That's a better shelter. It's uh, semi-circular. They're using the branches of that fallen tree. To, uh, to use as the base and they're weaving pine branches in to make a dome. It's quite nice, it still needs a lot of work but you stick uh, loads of leaf litter all over the back of that you get a nice nice dry shelter for the night, that'd be quite good. I like it. I'm not finding any young trees um, of 
anything other than sycamore in this place. Um, there's pine, there's sycamore, uh, there's Scots pine. Not much of it, but there's a few few Scots pine, um, a few beech trees. But I cannot, for the life of me, find anything like hazel, which is what I want. Um, it's very nice woodland. I'd love to own it, but there's a lot of people come up here and use it apparently. All the rubbish, a few shelters. Um, so I wouldn't want it to be my only woodland if it was. Uh, Anyway, I'm going to keep going and I'll maybe walk back through the, uh, the park in time. Cheers folks, bye. Okay folks, this is my favourite tree, the birch tree. It's got a much more uh, rounded leaf. Let's see if I can grab a bit without falling in this hole. Yep. So, you can see, the leaves are a hell of a lot more rounded, pointy, and also serrated as well. The bark on certain varieties can be quite shiny, which this one is. I'm not sure which variety this is, but you can see it's quite a shiny bark. And it's also got these little little lines that go across. It's very, very easy to peel the bark on these and you can use it for fire. And there's a larger one over here. Again, I think it's a very similar variety. bracken and fern on the ground here. And you can see it's really quite really quite shiny when the light's on it and it peels as well. You can peel it like this and use this to catch a spark. And loads of it. You can use the inner bark for, sorry, the, the bark itself, if you take big strips of it for containers and things like this. Uh, you can make birch tar from it. Um, the uses are all, of this tree are almost endless. I love this tree. Um, it's definitely my favourite tree of all and it grows very, very plentiful in Scotland. Right, let's see if I can go and find one, one of these hazel trees, because at the moment all I'm finding is sycamore. There's thousands and thousands of sycamore trees and sycamore saplings in this in this place. Um, I think I'm going to have to go back to the, uh, the park to see if I can find a hazel. Um, and this is, this is only this, these two birch trees that I've just found here, they're only the, the, the only two birch trees I've found so far. <laughs> There's a few pine trees, maybe Scots pine, uh, a few spruce trees, but everything else is sycamore. And, and lots of hawthorn as well, and a few wee gorse bushes. So, this is your bracken. You got your single uh, single stems. They're, they're not, um, you see the, the very top, they're all still curly. They haven't, um, there's one there. I haven't opened out yet. And there's your, your ferns over here. Grow in clumps like this. Okay. Right. Well, for some more walking. Catch you shortly. Alright folks, this is Elder. Now, a uh, good friend, uh, Craig Fordham, told me that elder is good for hand drill. So, 
I'm going to uh, process a little bit of this. I'm going to find a decent one. And uh, from there, I'll let it dry out a little. And uh, I'll make a hand drop. But you can tell it's elder because of the shape of the leaves. They're very, very pointed and they're serrated, but also the, uh, the flower is like this. And that'll turn into like a grape type format later. Um, so I'm going to take one or two pieces of this, the straighter ones if I can, and uh, they'll be dead. I think they are. Yeah. Oh, they've got the nicer bits. Okay, that'll do. Cheers, folks. Bye. Hey, folks. Um, uh, I've just walked across a field um, to have a wee look, see what I find. And I found these little things here. They're quite cute. You know, little circles with... Uh, Lots and lots of really thin white flowers on them. Just seen a little ed edge next to this wall. And then I popped my head over the wall. Look at that! They're everywhere. That's amazing. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to find out. That's astonishing. The whole forest is just white with these flowers. If they're edible, I'll find an infinite supply. <laughs> Let's find out. I forgot to tell you as well, I've harvested some elder for the hand drill. So I've got five pieces there, ranging from different lengths, but it should be somewhere uh, completely completely dead some are a little bit a little bit more green um, I'm gonna let them dry out a little bit and then uh, practice with the handle once I find something to make into a hearth but I'm loving this forest it's gorgeous got to get in there and have a look at some point I'm just gonna walk along the side of it at the moment but wow okay folks I'm still out on the hunt for hazel uh, I came across this tree here, I was having a look at it. It's not hazel, it's actually alder. Um, very, very similar in in leaf style um, and growth formation as well. Um, but if you look really closely, alder has, if I can find it, up here, pine cones. Ever so small. You've got to be careful to to find them and, and see them, but they are there. By noticing them, that was uh, how I ruled out this as being hazel. I'm really struggling to find some. I can't find any, um, and I've I've walked probably about eight or nine miles now. I'm walking around the park, local parks to see if I can find some, but I can't see any. That there is a Scots pine. You can tell it's a Scots pine because of the red tinge and colour. All about the back. And it's quite a twisty tree as well. No, that's not a Scots pine. <laughs> I don't think that's a Scots pine. No, it's not. That's not a Scots pine. My mistake. If I see a Scots pine, I'll show you one. That's definitely not one. I just thought it was because of the tinge on the uh, on the back. However, I'm walking a bit of boggy ground at the moment. You see this? That's a deer track.
There's lots of them around here. Let's see if I can see any more. There's another one there. And it's pressing down into the ground and uh, the pointy part of it is the, is the front of its feet. So it was heading off in that direction, probably through that gap in the woods there. I'm just in a little meadow at the park at the moment. It's beautiful but it's, uh, it's getting slightly dark so I'm going to head home soon. I found lots of cattail um, in several different places. Um, I've found thousands of elder trees, they're everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. I now know what an alder tree is. So we're getting there. As you can see there's birch trees everywhere in Scotland. They're usually the shiny ones. Right, there's some willow trees over there. It's a lovely little meadow this but Never gets used. Right, see you later. Hey folks, I think I've found a hazel. Got that shaped leaf. And it's all from one base. Like this. It's not too tall. I think this is a hazel. Um, I've been looking for one all day. So I think I'll maybe take a couple of little bits off this and uh, see if I can find some more. Cheers, folks. Wait, this is definitely hazel. There's a hazel nuts. Alright, cheers, folks. Just Wait. about to go home and there's a rainbow. to go with my hazel harvest. I've got a long one for the bow, another one where I can make maybe two or three spindles out of, and a small shorter one there that I can make another spindle out of as well. So that's my day. Uh, by the time I get home, I'll have probably done about 10 or 11 miles. I'm absolutely hanging, um, but I've had a good day. I've enjoyed myself. It's not got too wet. In fact, it's only just started raining now, so that'll be good. And uh, I'll let these these green sticks dry a little, and then we'll we'll uh, get into the primitive fire in the next week or so. Cheers, folks. Bye now.